Well, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Well, we welcome you here, those of you who are, those of you who are joining us online, worshiping with us. We're so glad that you're with us, and we're so glad that you have come to this place. Uh, God has drawn us here. God desires for us to be in fellowship with him, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and with each other. So we not only come for worship, but we also come for fellowship. And so I invite you to uh, greet each other and uh, welcome each other in the name of Christ. fun. That was so much fun. Thank you guys. That was great. I realized I just left my guitar case over here. I'm gonna have to move that. Oh, so many, the music continues. I love it. Well, this morning, <laughs> this morning we welcome the Reverend Dimitris Bukis. He's over here with his lovely wife, and I'm gonna read to you a little bit about him because he's got a lot here. You got a lot. There's a lot, Dimitri. So I'm gonna, here we go. Dimitri. Okay, son-in-law of our members George and Anna Kafalis, Demetra serves as the secretary for the executive committee of the General Synod in the Evangelical Church of Greece. That's a lot. And as a proxy member of the Central Committee of the C Community of Protestant Churches in Europe. That's a lot of churches, isn't it? How many churches? Do you know? <laughs> many, many. <laughs> He's a visiting professor of church history and historical theology at the Greek Bible College in Athens, Greece, and a regular keynote speaker at conferences and events throughout Greece, Cyprus, Albania, Egypt, Australia, and the United States. So we are very blessed to have you this morning. Um, Dimitri is gonna preach, continue our series this morning on the parables, so he's got a very interesting parable this morning about prayer. And if you'll look on the inside of the bulletin, you'll see that the theme this morning really is about prayer. You'll notice on the did you know that we've had more than 30,000 people have visited our cross in the Rose Garden with prayer requests. Isn't that amazing? There's not a day that goes by that I'm not out in the prayer, out in the Rose Garden, that somebody's not putting prayer uh, tags up on the cross. And so 
that has been a real blessing. This morning, the flowers are given by Roger and Karen Dennis in celebration of their 58th wedding anniversary. Bravo, well done. And those are beautiful. I don't see them here this morning, but congratulations to you all. Well, let me pray for us uh, this morning as we center our hearts in the worship of God. Let us pray. Loving God, you have called us to this place, and we have gathered to meet you and to be in fellowship as your church, the body of Christ. We have come to listen to you, to seek you, to worship you, for in you we hope. In you we live and move and have our being. So we come now to worship you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The uh, call to worship this morning is inspired by Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Let us stand as we worship God in song, singing joyful, joyful, we adore thee. of heights, the depth of the sea. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea. Creation. Creation's revealing your majesty. From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Song that it sings, all exclaiming. 
Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my thoughts. See if there is any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Let us come before our Lord to confess our sins. O Lord, you see the depths of our hearts, and you love us. You search us and know us. You, O Lord, know what we have done and what we have failed to do. For the mending of our hearts torn apart by unkindness. For the healing of our souls wasting away from the despair around us. For the forgiveness we seek for the sin we have allowed to persist. For the reconciliation of the world whose division condemns us. We pray for the courage and humility to admit our fault. We pray for self, knowledge of self, to recognize the depth of our need. And we pray for the strength to amend our actions and the hope of your grace that awaits us. Hear us now as we offer up our personal silent confessions. Through Christ we pray, amen. Friends in Christ, know this. The mercy of God is from everlasting to everlasting. And I remind you of this surpassing grace. Know that in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God, amen. Our prayer for illumination this morning is a song called Speak, O Lord, where our God desires to be heard and to be seen. And so we ask that our ears would be open.
hear our prayer as we have prayed this morning. This morning, we continue with our series, Stories of Life, the Parables of Jesus, with a reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 11, beginning with verse 5. Hear God's word to us this morning. And Jesus said to his disciples, suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, do not bother me. The door has already been locked. My children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The word of the Lord. A year ago, we were on the exact same church worshiping, and we were getting ready to go back to Greece, where we're living. Usually when we leave, we're a little bit sad because we live behind our friends and family. But this time I was very excited. I was going back to hold an annual youth conference. But this year was a very different year. It was the first after the COVID restrictions in Europe. And also we have a keynote speaker that was a good friend of mine. He was the running president of our seminary, and he was a cancer survivor after a five years heart battle with the disease. It was an answer to our prayers. The church was praying for five years for a man of 50 years old with an advanced prostate cancer Having one of the largest churches in Greece, being a beloved teacher, and now after five years, we had him back again. It was a great celebration. We enjoyed the conference. He was acquainting with new people, old friendships revived. And then at the very last day of our conference, he stood up. And he said, I have bad news. My doctor told me that the disease is back. And I don't don't have enough time. Soon enough, six months later, he passed away. And we were all puzzled. The proclamation of the word is, ask and you'll be given. Pray, knock the doors, 
and the doors will open. And often, we take our initiative from one parable of Christ that we find in the Gospel of Luke. The parable says, if you ask for bread, you will receive bread, not a stone. If you ask for a fish, you will receive a fish, not a snake. But our human experience very often confuses us. We pray, we put our heart there. And what we receive very often seems like a stone and a snake. The parable today, it's a very powerful parable. It's not about receiving. It's not about being well and wealthy all the time. It's all about prayer. And prayer is all about God. It's not about us. If you read the five verses that preceding the parable, you will see that Luke here has a very simple version of the Lord's Prayer. And the Lord's Prayer is the only prayer Jesus taught us to learn and pray with. Very simple. Exalting the Father who is on heaven and we ask Him to make His will possible on earth as it is in heaven. We ask for His kingdom to come. We ask for our daily bread and we ask to be delivered of temptation. Period. And then the parable comes. Let's say that you live in your darkest day of your life. The most difficult one. Like a situation when a friend have a friend outside his door at 12 o'clock at night. In the middle of nowhere, 2,000 years ago, where there is no hotels, there is no hospital, there is no electricity, there is not 7-Eleven, you cannot find anything. And he knocks the door and says, I'm hungry, I need something to eat. But of course, you never thought that somebody would come at 12 o'clock at night. And you don't have anything. But he's your friend. You want to accommodate his needs. What do you do? In our days, if you're rich enough, you can uh, call Uber Eats and something will bring you something to eat. Very convenient. Maybe uh, you can have a nice hotel arranged for the person. But in those days, nothing of those were available. The only availability was your neighbor who was asleep as well at 12 o'clock at night. But you go, you knock the door again and again till the person wakes up, open the door, and force the person to give you the supplies you need. Well, in today's version, we hear about a word that you have to be persistent. Well, in the Greek text, the word is completely different. It means being audacious. And it's a very important word. Because in the old world, the Greco Roman work of the time, audacity is a very bad virtue. According to the good philosophers, what it separates humanity from the rest of the creation is modesty and justice. So to be audacious is not something good. But Christ here uses this parable to tell us how much and how great the love of the Father it is. That even if you're audacious, He is there for you at any time, no matter how dark is your night.
And then what? Then he says about all these great things, asking you'll be received, and uh, knock the door and the door will open and everything will come and all the gifts will be on you. Well, he doesn't say that. He says something different. He gives an assurance that God is listens our needs so closely that he will definitely deliver what we need. Remember the Lord's Prayer. Your kingdom come, your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our daily bread. Save us from temptation. And Jesus said, be sure it will happen. Now the church of my friend was very puzzled after he passed away last March. The last three months of his sickness, I was replacing him on the pulpit. And it was very difficult when he passed away. All of us were puzzled. We didn't know why. The church was growing. They had a huge loan. They couldn't afford a new pastor at the time. They wanted to take care of the family that left behind. They have new ministries after the COVID restrictions lifted up. And everybody was totally puzzled. I was puzzled. We were knocking the heaven's door. Asking God, why? What? What do you want us to do next? Absolutely understandable. The parable says, in the middle of the night, God will open the door. We were knocking. And the door opened. And you know what? I had an invitation to me. Saying, Dimitri, you need to take over the church. I was not very happy at the time. That was not my plan. But God had his plans that we do not know. What we know is that he's always available to us. And what he gives us is the greatest gift of all. And that is the Holy Spirit. The very end of this parable is for the Holy Spirit. Ask and God will give you bread and fish and most of all will give you the Holy Spirit. How important that is. It is the most important thing in a person's life. The Holy Spirit is the God that lives in us and gives us the perspective of God in all we do. Holy Spirit was in Christ when he was on the cross, when he was wrongly accused, when he was persecuted, when he was totally forgotten by his own disciples. It was with him when he was resurrected. That was the greatest gift of this parable. That in the darkest night, when you knock God's door, the door is already open. And the table is already ready. There is bread. There is fish. There is the company of God himself. A new perspective of life is there. For the family of my friend, for the family of the church he was serving, that was a new challenge. And it is a new challenge for us every single day. Because that gives us a new perspective, the perspective the writer of the epistle of Hebrews explicitly teaches on the fourth chapter. He says, 
that we have someone on heaven that totally understands us in such a way that he became human as we are. He has been tempted but never seen. He lived with all the weaknesses we live and therefore he completely understands who we are. And now, because of that, we can knock his door and he will understand and listen to us and he will give us his perspective. I think that's the key of this parable. Whenever we pray, we need to remember that God is in control. We do not manipulate God. We do not force him to do something. His doors are open. We're invited. He is there to provide for us. Remember, when the resurrected Christ met his disciples at the shore of the lake, while they were fishing for fish, he was already outside cooking the fish. We need to trust him. We need to stay with the perspective of the Holy Spirit. We have someone who listens, who has a ready table for us, and he will give us everything in abundance through the Holy Spirit. Amen. time we have the great privilege of responding to God's word with the morning offering and so I invite you as we begin to take the morning offering that we're going to sing the song the goodness of God and uh, we're going to sing about God's goodness This song might be new to some of you, so we're just going to teach the chorus as the offering is being taken. in the 
the darkest night. Amen. You are close like no other. one more time just real quietly with uh, just a little bit of the band underneath us. All my life you have been faithful. You are good. Sing it out. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath. Every breath that I am able. I will sing. I will sing of the goodness of God, I will sing, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, let us be seated. And it's with that faith that we come to God in prayer now. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word that comes to us as bread. Bread that gives us life and energy to live for you and for one another. We thank you for your mercies that flow from your throne each day and your plans for us that are for our good and not our harm. Plans that are full of hope for a future that is free from the anxiety and illness and war that is around us. We thank you for your patience as we walk on this path that you have set before us. We thank you for your abiding presence in the pillars of fire and the cloud that enable us on our journey and guide us to the promised land. O Lord, we cry out to you in the darkness of a night that suddenly disrupts our rest knowing that you never sleep nor slumber. And while others look at at a door that appears locked and bolted, where the odds seem stacked against us, where doubts arise, give us that audacious persistence to wait in the dark of that night, knowing that you love us and will give us more than what we need. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the setting before us an open door. And, Lord, as we look around our world and witness the needs that present themselves to us, we pray for those places and people who feel locked out, who look at life in despair and suffer. We pray for an end to the endless wars and civil unrest in places that have long been forgotten in the news cycle places like Syria, South Sudan, Afghanistan, Darfur, Sri Lanka, Panama. There are so many, and our hearts break as we know yours does too. We pray for your church in those places and the people you have called to serve you there. 
We pray for ourselves as well that you would give us the courage and the strength to be your light in the midst of a great need and that open door to those who come to us in the middle of the night. We pray for this offering and for these gifts given to you in love that our work here and around the world may be unhindered. And most of all, Lord, make us a people of daily prayer and devotion to your word as we seek to be your disciples. Fill us with the Holy Spirit that we might be ambassadors to the good news that we have found in your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite uh, Justin to give a moment for stewardship, and then Maggie Craig will give us the announcements this morning. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the dog days of summer, right? A, little, uh, a lot of folks here out on vacation. So um, it's always tough to kind of get these things in the, in the middle of uh, the summer, but uh, all, all positive. So uh, when I kind of step up and have these conversations on a monthly basis, I spend some quality time a couple hours before church and ask God to give me the right words uh, to have the conversation. And part of what I did uh, this morning is I went through Laguna Beach, or should I say Laguna Prez, uh, church.org and, and looked at our website and um, pretty amazing uh, if you if you do go there uh, it's it's amazing how proud and and what a loving church that we have and I think uh, the folks that put that together did a really nice job of of kind of showing what and who we are and you could feel the love in that and um, you know they get they went through there's a there's a video in there it's a bit dated from 2017 but it talks about the lineage of our church. And it, it struck me, right, that the church, this church that we're in today was built in 1928. And um, as you guys know, uh, you don't pay for a church the day you build it, you pay for it after you build it, right? And wouldn't you know it that the, um, the Great Depression was 1929 to 1941. So can you imagine what it took these folks not only to build this great church, but have to pay for it during a depression? And then this great church was rebuilt. If you remember, they built it for him. I was also in this position uh, at that time in 2007. Uh, a lot of stress with that capital campaign, as you can imagine. And what happened after that? Uh, we had one of our financial crises in 2008 through 2010 or 11, whatever, however long that lasted. And that was pretty crazy to uh, be able to go through that as a church as well. So here we are at 2022. Our numbers are not bad, thank you, church. Um, but they're not, you know, uh, out the window fantastic as well. So, uh, you know, generous giving, I think, is something to talk about. Dimitri did a wonderful job, by the way, today. I really enjoyed uh, your talk. But uh, persistence is, is kind of what my job is. Uh, there are no campaigns, capital campaigns. There is no economic crisis. And frankly, we have no excuses. And that includes me. So with that in mind, please think of God, think of this great church. Do go to LagunaPresChurch.org uh, and uh, be thankful for what we have. So thank you. Good morning. Um, you can go out and audaciously participate in eating donuts and coffee today on the church patio. And just as importantly, or even more so, is Mission Possible. You can donate for the purchase of needed school supplies today and next Sunday, August 21st, on the church patio. This is for Camp Pendleton, uh, the San Onofre Elementary School. They're in need of funds to purchase school supplies for the new school year. So this is our way of helping the military families for all their sacrifices for us. The checks can be payable to the church and just please put in the memo line that it's for school supplies. 
we have another blood drive coming up. This time it's a City of Hope blood drive, and it's on Friday, August 26th from 11 to 4 in Tank Hall. You can help the Renagi family, who are one of our preschool families, and other City of Hope patients by participating in this blood drive. And you can go to cityofhope.org, give blood, to sign up. There is a one-day women's retreat coming up, so save the date in October. It's Saturday, October 15th that will be in Tankersley Hall because one retreat a year is not enough. And the men's retreat 2022, of uh, the registration, really they'd like to know by today, August 14th, if you are participating, that's October 21st through 23rd, Friday through Sunday at the La Quinta Resort and Club. Contact Brandon Shulin and brandon.shulin at gmail.com, or if you see him, just tell him. Thank you. And, oh, of course, we have our beautiful Terry here for prayer after the service. Let's please stand. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of us. Amen.